symbols are absolutely everywhere in the villages, in the towns and in the cities. And we've come to the city today, the city of St Asaph, to look at a very special symbol. Come on. Some symbols have been around for generations. Others suddenly pop up. I brought with me today Baddeley's Guide to North Wales, a tourist book. It has something quite interesting to say about St Asaph. And though pleasant enough, resting place for the traveller exploring the Vale of Clwyd will not, on its own account, long detain him. According to Baddeley, the only object of interest is the cathedral. But there is more to St Asaph since the days of 1934. What a fascinating monument! This monument commemorates the memory of one man from this city. This man spent most of his young life here in St Asaph, in the workhouse. And who would have thought that poor child would go on to be one of the greatest explorers that this planet has ever known? He was the Neil Armstrong of his day. He boldly went where no white person had ever gone before. And the words that he spoke will resound in every schoolboy and schoolgirl's vocabulary. Dr Livingstone, I presume. You know who I'm talking about. Henry Morton Stanley. He had a number of names in his lifetime who was born John Rowlands. He settled eventually on Henry Morton Stanley, but he was also known as Buller Matari, Breaker of Rocks, christened that by the people of the Congo. The whole piece is scattered with memoirs and symbols of an extraordinary life. I think this is an absolutely fitting, fitting tribute to Henry Morton Stanley and well done to St Asa for having it up. Fantastic, well done. Because, um, you know, Stanley, the guy that met him, that's why the hospital up here was named Stanley because it was a workhouse in the beginning. That's right. Yeah. This totem pole effect has like a boa constrictor going all the way around it, all the way to the top. After being discharged from the workhouse, Stanley made his way to Liverpool and eventually to America where he made his name as a journalist and a writer. And from there, to become an explorer in Africa and commissioned to find Dr. Livingstone. The name Livingstone was on everybody's lips. The guy had disappeared into the jungle, thought dead, and James Gordon Bennett, a newspaper magnate, ordered Stanley to find him, whatever the cost. And Stanley did just that. And what a cost it was, not just financial, but also in lives, British lives and African lives. Having battled over mountains, through swamps, through the jungle, braving all sorts of wild animals and other beasties, Stanley heard a rumour that Livingstone was alive and in a town called Ujiji. And having found Dr Livingstone, he left him exactly where he'd found him, in Ujiji. I don't know what that is. Some people say that Sedatsov is not a city. Well, it is. 
get over it. So Tusseth is a city just like any other city in Britain. Uh, founded in 1525 by St Mungo, also known as St Kentigan. He built a monastery here. Unlike the other cities dotted around the UK, St Asaph retains its smallness, whereas all these other cities were similar size to St Asaph, but of course they've been inhabited over the centuries by thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands in some cases, millions in some cases, of people. That has not happened to St Asaph. It is a city in its own right. It has a cathedral, enough said, and that's the law of it. So there is a lot more to say in Asif than what Baddeleys say. Worth a visit. Symbols are really fantastic. They tell you history, they tell you stuff that is not written down per se. Uh, you've got to work it out for yourself. This is a prime example. Stanley statue, absolutely fantastic. I hope you like it as much as I do. Bye for now. Twin day.